Thank you, worship team. Um, such a beautiful moments of worship. Um, how many of you are blessed by the worship just now? Amen. 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 It's such a, a rare moment uh, from time our busy uh, lives. We got to enjoy uh, the presence of the Lord. And as we worship together, I believe uh, God is in the middle of us. Can I have a little bit of bass? A li- to my, it's a bit um, too sharp. All right. How many of you are ready for the word of God? Raise your hand. Amen. Amen. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, as we sit down in this place in your presence, oh God. We want to tune in into your word. Father, we believe, God, you have something to say to us, oh God. Father, we desire today, this afternoon, we desire to know you even more. Holy Spirit, help us. Speak to us in a way that only you can. Speak to our heart so that we can be changed, we can be transformed into the image of Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, all God's people say, Amen, Amen. Amen. How many of you are excited every time you hear the word destiny, transformation, I'm wrecked through. How many of you are excited about it? You know, because the people in the world, people in the church, simply everybody is looking forward, excited when they, they love the word of transformation. They love, we all love the word destiny, breakthrough. We all love that. We love the story of zero to hero. We love the story of someone going from wreck to riches. You know, someone who have family pack and then become six packs. You know, church, I just come back from Bali. Every time I go for holiday, you go to the beach or to Bali, I, I want, I wish I have six packs. But it's not that simple. It's not that easy. The word destiny, transformation, breakthrough, all are cool. But until it requires of you to change and go through the process, it's not that cool. Everybody loves destiny, breakthrough, changes. That's cool. Let's go for six packs this weekend. Come on. But that's not that simple. Until you know you got to go through a process to achieve what you want to achieve. You know, a real survey highlighted to us that people in the world would rather stick to their miserable situation that they have right now instead of making changes in their life to step into the unknown situation. Because people see that the unknown situation is something beyond their control. And if it is beyond their control, they are not comfortable. They would rather stick to their current situation, miserable situation, not so good situation, living in the abuse relation. They would rather stay in that relationship instead of going into that unknown situation and making changes. They would rather stay in their comfort zone and rather forego the opportunity of becoming better Instead, they will rather to stick to who they are today and where they are today because it's beyond their control. Instead of moving into the unknown and go through that process, they will rather stay in the comfort zone. Are we as a church, the question is, are we as a church rather stay in the comfort zone or step into the unknown? And expecting there is something better. There is something of us becoming better. Not everyone is willing to go through that changes, the process of life. But here's the truth, church. The truth is, you have no choice. You have no choice. Whether you like it or not, whether you agree or disagree, Everyone 
one year from now, ten years from now, everyone will end up somewhere. Better or worse off? Whether you like it or not. One day from now, one week from now, one month from now, one year from now, you'll be somewhere. The choice is whether you want to end up somewhere with a purpose or you end up somewhere by accident. You just go with the flow. Or you decide, I want to end up somewhere one year from now, working on the purpose, on the direction God is directing us. Even though it is you need to step into the unknown, but you are expecting, you are becoming better. Not everyone is willing to go through that process, but you have no choice. Today, in just a minute, I want to talk to you on this thought. Trusting the process. Most people dislike going through the process of life. How many of you agree? Dislike. We don't like to go through things. The thing is that there is no progress in life if there is no process of life. Let me repeat it again. You don't get it. There is no progress in life without process of life. So here's my sermon title. Trust the process. Get it? Trust the process. So I want to tell you the truth. If we are not dead, if we are not in the paradise with the Lord, then we will be in the process to be molded to the image of Christ. If you are not in paradise, if you are not dead yet, if you are still breathing, kicking, living on this earth, then you are in the process. Just like Paul says, of course, we want to be like Jesus, but he says that don't think that we will attain perfection being equal to Jesus, but this is what he did. Forget the past, forgetting the past, and pressing forward in whatever process you are in becoming more and more and more, pressing forward in becoming more and more like Jesus. If you are not in paradise, if you are not died yet, you'll be in the process of becoming like Jesus. What we do, we may fail in the past, but we forget the past, we move in, we press in forward in whatever process in life. So, so we trust the process because, this is the next slide, we trust the process because, number one, why do we need to trust the process? Because there is a purpose of God in the process. Everybody say purpose. Do you know why do we need to trust the process, whatever process you need to go through, whatever struggle you need to go through? Okay? Because there is a purpose of God in that process. When we cannot see the purpose, when we cannot see the point in the process, do you know what will happen? We cannot persevere to go through that process. The moment we realize there's no point to continue, we will just drop. We will just quit. There's no point. Why? Because we don't see the purpose. Why do we need to go through this relationship with you? I don't see the point. The moment you realize there's no point, there's no purpose, you're going to quit. But when we can trust the process, we trust the process because we see there is a purpose. Amen? Church, Jesus loves you the way you are, but He loves you too much for you to stay the same, for you to remain the same. He's the purpose. Why? Because He wants you to be transformed to the image of His Son. 
He wants you to be like Jesus. Romans 8 verse 29, he said, we are destined to be molded. You know what's the meaning of molded? Being shaped, being molded into the image of Christ to develop Christ-like character. In short, Christ-like character is the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, passion, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. The fruit of the Spirit, that's what the aim, that's the goal, that's the purpose of God for you on this earth. When you are transformed into the image of His Son, you produce that fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is nothing but Christ's own character. The reason why God wants you to go through the process again is because He wants you to be just like Jesus. Having that fruit of the Spirit. Loving, kind, gentle to people around. When we become more like Christ, that translates us to be a better husband, to be a better wife, to be a better leader, to be a better pastor, to be a better person, to be like Jesus, to serve His purpose on earth. There is a purpose. Let me ask you a question. When you want to have more love, when you want to have more passion in your heart, in your life, okay, what do you think, how do you think God will give you? Okay? That's the question. Now, I want you to, have you, how many of you watched this movie? It's called, uh, what do you call, Even, Even Almighty. How many of you watched that movie? All right? There is a clip, a snippet, that says, how do you think God will give you passion and be courageous? Okay, you guys ready? I want you to just watch this. If someone pray for patient, do you think God gives them passion? Or does he give the opportunity to be patient? If they pray for courage, that, does God give them courage? Or does he give them the opportunity to be courageous? Do you think God's absence would warm up Or does he give them opportunity to love you? <laughs> well, 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 I gotta run. A lot of people are stressed. Enjoy. All right, right, right. So, this, so my this point, point is, is, if you want you that want fruit that of the of spirit, spirit and you ask more for, from God, how do you think God's gonna give you? God, I wanna be patient, more patient with uh, Jason, okay, my husband. How do you think God's gonna give Jessica passion? Do you think he will just like Thanos snap his finger and suddenly he got, she got this passion inside of her to be more patient with, his, with her husband? If you want to be courageous, do you think Jethro uh, will suddenly receive courage? No, God gives you the opportunity for you where you get to go through that process, learn to be patient. To one another. There is a purpose in the process. God will give you, God will place you in the process so He can what church? Give us the opportunity to develop the character of Christ. Love. You think you receive love suddenly the moment you step up from this church? No. Joy in the middle of the storm. How do you receive joy and peace? God gives you the opportunity. You have to go through the process of the storm of life where you got this anxiety, worry, and you got to choose joy and peace in the middle of the storm. Amen? There is a process. There is a reason God doesn't give us, doesn't change us overnight. There is a purpose in the process. Now, question is, why, if you wonder, why 
should we need to wait to produce this kind of fruit? Why do we need to go through the process? Isn't it, for example, why can't just God, God is so powerful, all-powerful, He can just give us whatever we ask, correct? For example, salvation, we receive instantly. Why can't we have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control in an instant just like salvation? The moment you ask, God gives you. Why? Because salvation is a gift, not a fruit. God is the one who go through the process to the cross. He paid the price in full. He did go through the process. Once he has it, he gave it to you. You receive it as a gift. But not with the fruit. Fruit, you cannot just receive it. It's not a gift. You develop it in you. Amen? There is a purpose in the process. And to have this fruit of the Spirit requires pro. So, could it be that we need to go through the process because there is a purpose in this slow motion growing process? There is a purpose. It is the process of God leading us. It is the process of us obeying the Holy Spirit that God will reveal himself to us. It is in the slow process. If it is an instant, you miss the God. You miss the experience to walk with God. Can you imagine, all right, being, to be able to develop the fruit of the Spirit, we got to go through this slow process. Why? Because we experience God having that kind of characters towards us first. Then, only then, we develop that character, godly character in us. When we are in trouble, we, 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 we have that joy and peace. We experience, we, we experience God's own character firsthand. We see it. We got to taste and see who God is for us in that process. Only then we develop it, that God's character in us. It's through that slow process. If it is an instant switch, we will miss the experience. We will miss knowing God. We will miss walking with God. We are talking about God's own character. It's the fruit. You cannot adopt character, okay? We cannot adopt God's character without walking with Him. And that walking requires a process. Bearing fruit requires a process. How many of you see a tree? You plant, next morning you got to see your fruit. To bear fruit, Fruit of the Spirit requires time. And so is, next slide, to bear fruit takes time. And so is our relationship with God requires process, times. How do you think God's going to change Matthew, going to change Jethro, Gerald, who, okay, this is just an example, who was easily angered last time? How God going to change? It takes time, correct? Slowly from easily angered to be so passion, so kind. It takes time. Do you think it will change immediately? And God allows that to be in the slow process. And when you go through that slow process, not only you becoming a better person, you also knowing God. You get to know God. You get closer to God. God has a purpose in the process for you to bear the fruit of the Spirit. But there is another purpose in it. 
for you to grow closer to Him and get to know Him. Amen? Amen? You want to, be, to bear fruit? You want to be loving? You want to be uh, gentle? It takes time. While you are in the process of bearing fruit, another purpose is knowing God. Okay? My next point. Why do we need to trust the process? The first one, there is a purpose of God in the process. God wants you to bear fruit, okay, and get to know Him. That's relating to my second point. Why do we need to trust the process? Because there is the first one purpose, the second one, there is a presence of God in the process. Presence of God in the process. Let me just read to you. John 15, verse 1. I am the true vine. My father is the fine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruits. I am the vine. You are the branches. You know this verse. You re- if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much Notice the fruit is a singular, though it's saying much, it's singular. It's the same fruit in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit. You want to produce the fruit of the Spirit? The fruit, not fruits, represent the fruit of the Spirit? Stay connected. Apart from me, because apart from me, you can do nothing. You get this? Church, pruning, pruning, is a process. A process of cleaning and cutting of the tree to spur what? Growth and fruitfulness. You know, for tree, if you are a tree being cut, being trimmed, it's not a comfortable process. It's not an enjoyable process to go through. But here's the positive side. The positive side is that God is the one doing the pruning. He is with you during the entire process. There's a presence of God. In fact, God wants the branches, which is you, to be connected, to be so connected to the vine, Jesus. God wants you to be connected to Jesus all the time throughout the pruning process. So whatever you go through, church, whatever the struggle you go through today, whatever the situation is, know this. He will be with us in the process. Whatever it is, whether you believe it or not, it's up to your faith. You are in struggle mode, but know this, God is in your struggle. Next slide. Oftentimes, God does not get you out from a situation. He gets in the situation with you. There is a presence of God in the process. The verse shows how we can bear fruit, right? The first just now. If you want to bear fruit, stay connected. You are the branch. That's the first. If you want to bear fruit, stay connected to the front. A branch, a branch, you, can, you won't see a branch all right, of the tree, working so hard, working so hard to produce a fruit. You won't see this. Okay? A branch will just naturally bear fruit according to its kind. As long, this is the key, as long as the branch connected to the vine, being part of the tree, God says, I am the one, you are the branches. So the key is to stay connected to Jesus. Stay connected to the source. Stay connected to the Spirit. You will bear much fruit. We just need to work on the relationship with God. You'll be good. You don't need to work on your character to be good. You work on the relations. You work on the intimacy with God, and you will bear fruit. Now, for your knowledge, let me just 
give you a little bit difference between the fruit of the Spirit and the gift of the Spirit. How many of you know that the Bible teaches us about fruit of the Spirit and gift of the Spirit? Do you know the difference? How many of you know? There are two, right? There are two separate things. Some of us, I used to get confused. So I want to explain, I want to share the difference between the fruit and the gift of the Spirit. The fruit is the result. The fruit is the result of staying connected, having relationship with the Spirit. Simple. A fruit is a result of a branch connected to the vine. It will grow, it will develop, it will bear fruits naturally. When we walk with the Spirit, our character will be influenced by the character of God. It's just so naturally we develop the same character of whom we walk together with. Amen. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and all this as a result of working on your relationship with the Spirit. Not as a result of working on your character. The world tell you, work on your character, you got to be better. No, the Bible teaches us, work on your relationship with God. And God is the one who is working on your character. Amen. Now, what about the gift of the Spirit? Let me just uh, give you a definition. The gift is the permanent enablement given to you, given to you to follow the prompting of the Spirit to build and edify the people and the church. All right? Is the enablement from the Holy Spirit for you to minister. Now I am preaching on a pulpit. I am using my gift. All right? A gift. Do you know how many of you receive a gift? How many of you receive? You never receive a gift? Matthew, never receive a gift from your parent? I got to talk to your parent. <laughs> okay, you receive a gift? All right, good. How many of you receive a gift? Whenever we receive a gift, we receive a gift, right? And how many of you, if you've been in the church, we're playing games, right? Once you receive a gift, you know that you can transfer a gift? You can give the gift to other people? The biblical term is impart, impartation. So you receive a gift, you can desire a gift. Oh God, I want this gift of word of wisdom. You can desire and someone else who has this word of wisdom can impart the word of wisdom to you. And you will, of course, need to develop it. A gift can be received. You can desire a gift and you can impart that gift to other people through the power of the Holy Spirit. But here's the difference. You cannot impart the fruit of the Spirit. You have to develop it yourself. You cannot give Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness to Jason when he is struggling. He has to develop it within him by walking with the Spirit. You see the difference? You cannot impart it. That is why you will see somebody who is anointed with the gift of the Spirit and it's possible for him to have that gift of the Spirit, word of wisdom, preaching, prophesy. Okay, in the name of the Lord, that's all good. It's going to bless the church, edify the church. But it's possible for someone who has the gift of the Spirit, but does not develop the fruit of the Spirit. You get that? It's possible. Your family at home and the people close to you, they don't need you to have the gift of the Spirit. They need you to have the fruit of the Spirit. My wife doesn't need me to have the gift of the Spirit at home, speaking in tongue to her. To her. What my wife and my family and my kid needs, that I speak in English to them in kindness, in gentleness, with passion. That's the fruit of the Spirit. It's possible for someone who have mega church anointed, and it's going to bless the church, yet struggling with the people around him, with the family, with the church. Why? Because the gift, the fruit is not imparted. You have to develop it in you through a process of walking with the Spirit, connecting to Jesus. So here is my challenge today. 
I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna just skip the next slide. Here's my challenge today. All right, are you ready? Stop working on your issues. Stop working on your character to be good. But start working on relationship with God. Start working on relationship, on intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And God is the one working on the character inside of you. Jesus never asked the disciple, hey, you work on your character. You better be good. You fail. You better work on the character. Jesus never asked the disciple to do that. What Jesus did to the disciple, follow me. Be close to me. And God is the one who will work on their character. That is the reason why it's called the fruit of the Spirit. It's not the fruit of your own flesh. It's not the fruit of Jethro. It's not the fruit of Robbie. It's not the fruit of Sony. It's not the fruit of your own power and strength. It's the fruit of the Spirit who work inside of you. Amen? Will you trust the process? You don't try hard to work on your character. You check your track record for the past three years, trying to be a good Christian, and we all fail. We all fail. But if we trust the process, will you trust the process of working on the relationship with God and the relationship with others will be better? Just like the fruit. At first, it will not immediately turn to be sweet. From sour, it will grow eventually to be sweeter each day. You cannot expect your husband to immediately change from sour, but there is a progress. When you start relationship with God, work on relationship and intimacy with the Holy Spirit, it will slowly change the taste, the character of you from sour to sweeter. Will you trust the process? Discipline is good and encourage discipline for my kid, for everybody, but only bring you to a certain level. If it's, it's, work on, it's the work of your own power and strength, your, 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 your flesh, it's not the work of the Spirit. But when we trust the process, God is the one who will work on your character. Amen, church. Will you trust the process? Number three. Why do we need to trust the process? The first one, there is a purpose of God. God wants you to bear fruit. And when you're bearing fruit throughout the process, not only you become a better person, you discover Him. You experience Him. That He is also good. He is also loving, kind to you. Passion to you. Okay? Number two, there is a presence of God. You are in the process, but it's okay. God is the one pruning you. God is the one is changing you. Work on the relationship. Don't work on the issues. The moment you work on the relationship, you realize you have no longer issues. You, you realize you don't have, you no longer have that issues with the person next to you, with the per person around you. The third one, why do we need to trust the process? Because there is a power, everybody say power, of God in the process. So, you guys know, you guys will agree, Process is the place where we are weak, when we are in struggle mode. And by our dictionary, that's the last place we want to be. We do not want to be in a place. Okay? And the greatest need when we are in the struggle, in the process is, ah, finally, we reach the end. We're no longer in this mess. No. What we need to see when we are in the struggle is to see this. Is a process of becoming is happening within me. It's a process of becoming like Jesus is really ha happening in me. You are not looking to the end of the process. You are looking the process of becoming is really happening. Around. And Paul, Apostle Paul is the testament to this becoming, okay, and experiencing the power of God. Let's read Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verse seven. So, Paul was saying this. So, everybody say, come on, just anyone, just look up the screen. I want you to just repeat. I want you just to read together with me. First seven, two, three, go. So, 
to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Come on, louder. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly in my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest on me. That is why, for the sake of Christ, I delight in weaknesses, in insult, in hardship, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Church, the world does not want to be in the position of weakness. The world wants to escape from weakness. But the Bible teaches us to discover power in weakness. You know, these ideas of staying in weakness just doesn't sell well. Jesus is saying, my grace is sufficient for you. I will not take the thorn. There's a purpose of the thorn. What's the purpose of the thorn? So that I will not first. I will, I will not. What's that? To keep me from becoming conceited or proud. So there's a purpose of the thorn. And God didn't remove that thorn from Paul. He pleaded three times with the Lord. He didn't remove that thorn. And nobody wants to be in the weak position. How many of you know this verse? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23. Paul said this, Christ crucified was foolishness to the Greek and a stumbling block to the Jews. But to those who are called, okay, crucifixion is the power and the wisdom of God. Cross is a symbol of weakness. But to us, to those who believe, it is a symbol of what? A symbol of love, a symbol of strength, a symbol of power and victory. My message is, when we are weak, there is a power. There is a purpose of the tone. Now, I want you to see the pattern. Okay, Paul was given a tone. Then there's another story in the Bible, similar story, dealing with thorns. Do you know who is? It's Jesus. Who was given a thorn? It's Jesus. A crown of, come on, thorns. The thorn is pierced to the flesh that make Paul weak. Lord, please take this away. Jesus was given a crown of thorn. The thorn is pierced to his skull. Lord, if you are willing, take this cup away. The thorn purpose is to make the flesh weak. Got it? Let me repeat. The thorn is to make the flesh weak. But to those who have relationship with the Spirit, realize when our flesh is weak, there is a greater power than the power of the flesh. That is the power of the Spirit. Come on, somebody, help me preach. There is a power. When do you realize? In the struggle, I am weak. God, please take me away from this struggle. But that struggle serves a purpose. To realize your power, your flesh, human effort, all this is weak. And when you have that connection, point my number, two, my number two point, you will realize there is a power greater than my flesh, the power of the Spirit. Will you trust the process? Will you trust the process? There is a power. When we are weak, we are strong. We rely not on our flesh. We rely on the power of the Spirit. What's the purpose of power? It's to do what the Holy Spirit asks you to do. Power 
is not for nothing. Power is for obedience. When Jesus realized he has that power, when his flesh is weak, is to continue to do what he's called, walking to the cross. Paul, when he realized he was weak, he boasts even more in weakness to do what? To do what he was called to do, to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. Amen. Will you trust the process? Whatever situation you are in right now, there is a purpose. Will you trust the process? Whatever situation and struggle you are in right now, there is a presence of God and there is a power of God. Amen. Let's just stand. Church, you have your own tone in the flesh. Your tones will be different from mine. But the purpose is the same. We are given tones that significantly weaken our flesh in order to make us stronger in our spirit. Can you trust the process? When we are weak, we can say we are strong. Strong not to heed the desire of our flesh, but to heed the desire of the Spirit. There is a purpose in what this right situation in right now. The Word of God says, remain. Remain in me. Stay connected. There is a purpose so that you become mature. And when you mature, as my follower, you will bear fruits. And you will experience the power of God. We want to be just like Jesus. Came out from the wilderness with the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray in difficult times like this, when we are in the deep process of our life, walking through the desert, facing our storm, going through the valley, my prayer is that you open our eyes. Open our eyes, Lord, to see the purpose, a divine purpose through the process. We do not want to just get out from our problem but miss your divine purpose. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help us to find strength and to persevere and through to go through the process in our life. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence to us today. Let's lift up both our hands and receive the blessings. Father, seal your word. Be it a rhema to their life. Purpose, presence, and power. Seal your word, Jesus. Every time they struggle, they just won't give up because there is a purpose. And we find you, there is you beside me. There is a presence of God. And there is a power. You don't rely on your own strength and power. Your flesh is weak, it is. But the spirit is strong. Seal your word, O God. Bless your people. Bless your people. May the love of the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ, the anointing, and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We were to walk by the Spirit. Step up our step by the Spirit. Father, help us, Lord, to be obedient to the prompting and the nudging of the voice of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, bless your people in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Happy Sunday. You may be seated.